The story kicks off with a dad escorting his wife and son to the movie theater. However, he opts out of the family cinema outing, citing a heavy workload as the reason. Consequently, he instructs his wife to use a taxi, emphasizing its safety over the bus, due to the bus's alleged high crime rate. After the film, the wife and son wrap up their movie experience, and true to the father's advice, they choose a taxi for the journey home. Initially uneventful, the mother shares their address with the taxi driver, expecting a smooth ride. But things take a strange turn as the driver steers away from the intended route, leaving the mother uneasy about their unplanned trajectory. Despite her protests, the driver remains silent, locking the taxi doors and heightening the mother's concern. Attempting an escape, she finds herself thwarted by the locked doors. Eventually, the taxi halts on a desolate street, and without warning, the driver strikes the mother, rendering her unconscious. Now at the driver's home, the true intentions of this mysterious man remain shrouded in uncertainty. Shortly after, the mother is forcefully separated from her son, advising him to cover his ears if he hears any distressing sounds to preserve his calm. What began as a simple day at the movies has now spiraled into a nightmare as they find themselves in the clutches of a disturbed kidnapper. In this harrowing situation, the boy can only endure the haunting echoes of his mother's screams, a traumatic experience that causes him to lose control and wet himself. Dragged into the house by the man, he's informed that his mother is no more and won't be there to care for him. Overwhelmed with grief, the little boy can only express his sorrow through tears. As the days unfold, the boy learns that the kidnapper's name is Bob, Bob establishes strict rules, commanding the boy to unquestioningly follow his every order. The young captive is assigned tasks such as cleaning up the aftermath of Bob's violent acts and preparing breakfast for him each morning. However, he is forbidden from eating anything without explicit permission. The only sustenance permitted is the leftovers on Bob's plate, a meager allowance for the captive boy. Additionally, he's tasked with creating a morbid scrapbook, collecting news articles about missing persons, a sinister catalog of Bob's sadistic deeds. To drive the point home, Bob decides to refer to the young boy as Rabbit. As soon as Bob departs, Rabbit is tasked once again with cleaning the house, eradicating any traces of his captor's gruesome deeds. Seizing the opportunity to escape, Rabbit quickly ascends to the house's ceiling, harboring hopes of fleeing from the clutches of this psychopath. However, it becomes apparent that Bob has anticipated Rabbit's attempt, lying in wait outside to intercept him. In a calculated move, Bob deliberately allows Rabbit to scream, a chilling realization that there's no one around to offer assistance. The desolate surroundings confirm Rabbit's isolation, with Bob's house standing as the sole dwelling in the area. Subsequently, Bob binds Rabbit's legs with a long chain, intensifying his control over the captive. To tighten surveillance, Bob strategically installs cameras in every nook and cranny of his house. Each day, Bob continues his heinous acts, kidnapping women to satisfy his unquenchable desires. Tragically, these victims meet a grim fate at the hands of Bob to ensure his crimes remain concealed. Rabbit is burdened with the aftermath, forced to clean up the gruesome scenes left behind by his captor. Over the span of a decade, Rabbit grows into adulthood in a deteriorating mental state, subjected to the daily cacophony of women's screams kidnapped by Bob. Remarkably, Bob never targets male passengers during his criminal endeavors, continuing to maintain a facade as a regular taxi driver when transporting male passengers. One fateful day, a father and son enter Bob's taxi. Observing the scene unfold, Bob notices the father berating and physically abusing his son. The distress evident on the boy's face leaves a lasting impression on Bob's mind, prompting him to seek answers from Rabbit. Curious about the positive aspects of fathers, Bob questions Rabbit about the good deeds his own father performed before the unfortunate abduction. However, Rabbit struggles to respond, unable to recall any positive memories. Recognizing Rabbit's need for education, Bob decides to provide him with a human anatomy book, 
encouraging him to learn and expand his knowledge. In an unexpected turn, Bob contemplates treating Rabbit as his own son. Proposing a deal, Bob promises to allow Rabbit outside the confines of the house and provide him with a girl if he successfully comprehends the intricacies of the human body outlined in the book. Yet Rabbit's sole desire is to be reunited with his long-lost father. This assertion agitates Bob, leading him to reveal a photograph showcasing Rabbit's father with a new wife and family, emphasizing that Rabbit currently has no one but him for support and care. Day after day, Bob persistently continues his pattern of abductions, while Rabbit delves into the intricacies of human anatomy. Bob remains actively involved in every aspect of Rabbit's daily routine, providing care and guidance. Seeking to enhance Rabbit's skills, Bob consistently incorporates biology-related questions into their various activities. Over the course of a decade, Rabbit's existence becomes a haunting symphony of victimized cries. To break the grim monotony, Bob frequently engages Rabbit in card games, adding a peculiar twist to their interactions. In this psychopathic card game, the duo must unveil the identity of the kidnapped victim. The holder of the victim's ID card reveals the name, leaving the other to deduce the age and background of the unfortunate soul. So far, Rabbit has consistently taken care of disposing of Bob's victims' bodies, making sure to bury them in a hidden room. But one night, everything changes. Bob experiences a haunting nightmare tied to his history. In the dream, his father reappears, tormenting both Bob's brother and himself. As the older sibling, Bob has endured constant physical and verbal abuse from his father. Even worse, he is also told to have sex with his own mother with the reason that he is not allowed to have relationships with other women. Crazy things that happened to him as a child left him traumatized, and he had no social relations at all. It can be said that he has been under extreme mental pressure since childhood. His past is the reason of his constant desire to kidnap women in the present. The following day, Bob abducts another woman to be the final challenge for Rabbit. Dispatching the intoxicated woman with a swift slash to her neck, Bob quizzes Rabbit on the specific area he targeted. Rabbit swiftly identifies the injury as the carotid artery, showcasing his sharp intellect. Impressed, Bob rewards Rabbit by allowing him to pick a girl from the school yearbook. Bob subtly hopes Rabbit will seize the opportunity to experience physical contact with a woman for the first time, but Rabbit remains defiant aware that Bob will likely harm his chosen girl. Observing Rabbit's fear, Bob unexpectedly loosens the chain from his leg, granting Rabbit the freedom to walk without constraints for the first time in a decade. Despite this rare reprieve, Rabbit is coerced once more into selecting a girl from the yearbook. Bob, driven by his deranged desires, continues his twisted game, selecting victims as if making a purchase. Ultimately, Rabbit settles on 18-year-old Angie, and like a delivered package with no additional charges, Rabbit's chosen victim promptly arrives at the residence. Continuing on, Bob instructs Rabbit to examine the girl he selected, emphasizing that she is a practical test to earn Bob's trust. Once in the room, Bob demands Rabbit to engage in a sexual encounter with Angie, threatening to kill her himself if Rabbit refuses. In essence, after the intimate act, Rabbit is coerced into taking Angie's life. Left alone with Angie, Rabbit grapples with the moral dilemma, reluctant to harm an innocent victim. Expressing his unwillingness to harm Angie, she, in turn, is touched by his compassion and offers to engage in the act if it ensures her safety. However, Rabbit rejects her advances, while Angie persistently encourages him to touch her freely. As they are on the brink of starting, Bob interrupts by forcefully opening the door and calling out Rabbit's name. In that critical moment, Rabbit swiftly plunges a knife into Angie's stomach, recognizing it as the anticipated moment Bob had been waiting for. Subsequently, Bob, who was previously asleep, awakens to find Rabbit dragging Angie's lifeless body into a concealed room for burial. Confronting Bob, Rabbit declares his readiness to commence the hunt. 
The following day, Bob readies hunting attire for Rabbit and gifts him a new chair, transforming Rabbit's appearance from a disturbed psychopath to a more composed demeanor resembling Bob's son. Finally, after an extended period, Rabbit revisits the taxi that brought his kidnapped mother to Bob's house, triggering memories of her harrowing screams from the back seat. Upon reaching the city, Rabbit is tasked with selecting his preferred type of victim. However, he finds that the women in the city don't match his preferences. Bob pulls over abruptly when a police car passes, prompting Rabbit to hide to avoid detection as a kidnapping victim. During this tense moment, Bob inadvertently catches a reflection in the glass, revealing the word help written next to the car's body. Realizing Rabbit's deceit, Bob loses trust in him. Determined to return home, Bob hastens to check Angie's grave. Unbeknownst to Bob, Rabbit had surreptitiously written the plea for help during the earlier charade of peering into the back seat. Meanwhile, Angie, who was stabbed by Rabbit, is still alive. In reality, Rabbit applied the knowledge of human anatomy acquired during his earlier stabbing of Angie. Notably, he targeted a non-fatal area, avoiding harm to internal organs. Aware that Bob would likely harm Angie if he didn't act first, Rabbit instructed her to play dead as he prepared to move her to the secret room. He left Angie a flashlight and a knife inside her grave as a precaution, anticipating that Bob would eventually uncover the truth. Upon returning home, Bob, feeling betrayed, lands a powerful punch on Rabbit's face, rendering him unconscious. Seizing the opportunity, Bob heads to Angie's grave with intentions of ending her life. Regaining consciousness, Rabbit hears Bob's screams and rushes to the house. Angie, displaying quick reflexes, immediately slashes Bob's leg with a knife upon his approach. The severe wound hinders Bob's ability to carry out his sinister plan in that location. Shortly thereafter, Rabbit enters the scene and confronts Bob in a dark, intense struggle. Ultimately, Rabbit uses a knife to deliver a fatal slash to Bob's carotid artery, ending the psychopath's life. Angie, bewildered by the unfolding events, can only watch the gruesome scene unfold before her eyes. Ultimately, Rabbit successfully rescues Angie and accommodates her in the house. Meanwhile, Bob, now deceased, finds his final resting place in the secret room. In a nutshell, Rabbit is now on a quest to locate his father, Brad. Confirming what he heard from Bob, Rabbit discovers that his father indeed has a new family enjoying a more opulent lifestyle. Shockingly, after over a decade apart, Brad fails to recognize Rabbit's face. Faced with the truth, Rabbit discloses his identity as Brad's long-lost son, Tim. Brad, upon realizing his son is alive, embraces Tim and brings him into the house. Subsequently, Rabbit hands a letter to his father, unraveling the facts behind the tragic events. The letter reveals that Brad had provided money to his brother, who worked as a taxi driver. Moreover, Brad left instructions for his brother to kidnap Rabbit and his wife after they finished watching a movie. Essentially, the psychopath responsible for killing Rabbit's mother and kidnapping him for a decade is revealed to be none other than his own uncle. This revelation clarifies why Rabbit's father advised them to take a taxi instead of the bus. Everything was meticulously orchestrated to facilitate Brad's escape from his existing family in pursuit of a new wife. Upon discovering that his deceit has been laid bare, Brad hastily instructs his new wife and child to retreat upstairs. A photograph depicting Rabbit's mother and her son, alongside a check intended for Bob, exposes all of Brad's hidden machinations over the past decade. Deliberately choosing his less fortunate brother, Brad sought to exploit Bob's psychopathic tendencies, providing financial support for his survival. As the truth unfolds, Brad, seething with anger, subjects Rabbit to a barrage of relentless slaps. Despite Rabbit's wife attempting to intervene and defend him, she too falls victim to Brad's violent outburst. Witnessing the woman's suffering becomes unbearable for Rabbit, pushing him past his breaking point. Reacting impulsively, Rabbit strikes his father in a vital area, leading to Brad's demise. 
Brad's wife, rather than harboring resentment towards Rabbit, pities him for the difficult situation he endured. In an act of compassion, she releases Rabbit before alerting the authorities, reporting a home invasion that resulted in her husband's death. In the film's concluding moments, Rabbit returns to Bob's house, now sharing it with Angie. The story takes a poignant turn as Rabbit begins to rebuild his life, finding solace and a semblance of normalcy in the company of Angie.